Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. Uh, so the first thing I want to do in this episode is bring this cursed pocket watch back to the antique store, but first I'm gonna ask about the damn spittoon. The spittoon has been placed at a really challenging height. Hey, Dan, your spittoon is kind of inconvenient. Nah, nah, baby, that spittoon isn't for spitting in. That's gone out of style now that mass-produced cigarettes are readily available anyway. No, that's a bona fide historical artifact. What, really? That's right, belonged to a famous adventurer from Frisco just be before the turn of the century. Really? Who? Well, nobody's exactly sure. A lot of people think it belonged to Mumfler Fumpferdink. It's a strong theory because if there's one thing we know about that cat, it's that he loves spittoons. But other people say it belonged to a fella by the last name of Thurnleon. And a whole lot of people claim it belonged to a whole lot of other people. But there's one thing we know for sure about this spittoon, who whoever's it was. They didn't use it for spitting into. They wore it as a hat. What? Ew, gross. <laughs> right? They sure got into some weird stuff back then. Yeah, no kidding. Alright. I still have my crab walk. I don't think I ever looked to the left of the antique store. The left of the cola store, at least. Going out of business. Going seems inaccurate. Probably nothing you want in here anyway. There's nothing in that direction except the road you arrived on, and walking all the way back there probably isn't a good use of your time right now. Okay. I found the watch. It was complicated. I'd be more surprised if you told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump in the uncursing machine. It's a pocket watch. It doesn't just uncurse the thing and get some sleep, okay? You look like you've been through the ringer. I won't dispute that. Actually, I'm going to give some sardines to the cat. You open the can of sardines. Calliope immediately wakes up, devours the entire can, and then purrs as she licks the remaining oil from your fingers. Looks like you've made a friend. New cat unlocked. Are there multiple cats in this game? Oh my god. You can now pet Calliope to receive a boon. Yes. You give her a nice scritching and she purrs as she goes back to sleep. Calliope's affections have reinforced you against the slings and arrows and mice and birds of the world. Plus one physical armor. Nice. So I have two physical armor now. Let's see... What food, potions, etc. Hmm. Alright. I don't really need to replace the physical armor. You sit in the chair, da da da. I would like to incurse the dangerous pocket watch. The machine snorts the pocket watch up into its dome and begins its strange and loud work. The pocket watch is pulled this way and that. Its ticks become ksits, and its talks cots. And as its three hands are forcibly bent back, you swear you hear screams. And then it's done. The watch falls into your lap. Hands now set to 623.34. Uncursed pocket watch. Now that it's free of the taint of that shadow energy, it's just a boring regular watch. If you think about it though, being on time for things is kind of like a magic power. Okay, so it's basically a better version of the duck call. The watch is cursed, now resides within the machine. Want to project your consciousness into it? Why not? In your mind's eye, you see the hands of a pocket watch spin back on themselves with jittery violence. With each revolution, the face of the watch itself expands until it is larger than you and the building and the street. The whole world lives in the blur of the fast running hands in which you see life go by in reverse time. Submarines turn to longships, cities to stone dwellings, cowboys to courtesans. You are traveling faster and faster to the beginning of time itself, and there's no telling when this ride will end. Hold on tight. I'm a dinosaur! Eat! I don't want to eat him. Is there another option?
With those two salad forks? No, you lack the opposable thumbs necessary to turn a doorknob. You're completely contained in here unless you figure out how to open doors. Break the door down. I'm a big dinosaur. Hoof. You slap your prehistoric tummy against the wood, but it doesn't even make a dent. Maybe that's why the dinosaurs went extinct. Couldn't open doors. Rower. Rower. Okay, so... What's dexterity? Eat Gabby. Whoa there, hoss! What's got, got all horns and rattles? Been dipping into the nose paint again? Gabby doesn't talk like that. Sure is, partner, sure is. <laughs> hey Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. Whoopa! Poo poo! I'm the quickest around the west, sure enough. Can you open the door for me? Ooh, I don't know. Never had a head for puzzles, Vivian. That's got me right funkified. What strangeness afflicts thee? Never mind, for the sun transits the horizon, and I grow ever the more in need of thy assistance. Understand, whilst you sleep under this roof, thou art my lodger, and a signature on this paperwork is by me required. When did you, when did you start talking like this? A provocative remark, ma'am, madam, and by thee well made. Can you open these doors for me? Curious, madam, for I do not believe those doors to be locked. Well, what do I know? And thou will find in the telephone table thither a key to satisfy thy need. Okay. You check the message pad next to the phone. There's a note for you. Dinosaur. No phone number. Chomp. What is dexterity? How do I... Eat the cat. Oh no! She ran away. Eat Charles. Hey, easy does it, baby. We're all hungry. Please help. I am a dinosaur. Yeah, baby, yeah. Can you open the door for me? Huh? What's that, Greta garbled? Okay. Eat the chessboard. Chomp, chomp. Knock the chair over. Okay, I gained dexterity. Real groovy pocket watch you got there, Vivian. I like the way it tick, tick, ticks. You understand me? Yes. Lots of power in that timepiece. A lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise not to throw that power away? A lot of good to be done with that groovy power, baby. Charles doesn't call me baby. I hear you, kitty cat. What do you say, kitty cat? Will you do me a promise? Promise to throw away the groovy power in that timepiece? Yeah, let's do it, man. Groovy, kitty cat. Absolutely smashing. Shake on it, kitty cat. He holds out his hand. Okay. Vivian! Uh, whilst thou tarry, good madam, the absence of thy John Hancock on my paperwork grows ever more urgent. Thy signature, if it pleases thee. Um, so I think that the way this is going to go... Relax, kitty cat. I need to gain dexterity enough to do various tasks. And that will give me more dexterity. Okay. Well, how am I supposed to eat the cat? Alright. You expend considerable effort wrangling your claw around the knob only to find the drawer is locked. One dexterity. Okay. Shake hands. Alright, I have six now. No. Read a book. You can't release, relate to most of the books they have here, but there's one travelogue by Diplodocus that prov proves moderately diverting. Read a paper. Peruse the newspapers, claws making only minor holes in the page. Add to the list. Your talons carve the letters HELP into the chalkboard. Sign my name. You scroll in an easy line. I'm much obliged, Vivian, and I hope from now thy sleep is all the more sleep sweet for its legal correctitude. 
open the door. So we meet at last. With I looking the older man, though you are far older than I shall ever be. Wow, I never saw this room before. We are the Alpha and Omega. You, the beginning of time, and I, its end. Will you walk with me, dear friend, to watch the death of the world and the birth of another? Yes, my friend. All right, I think that did it. Tick, tick, tick. The hands of uncursed pocket watch beat on, boats with the current, born correctly into the future. You pull the pocket watch out and look at it. It's gained some luster. I wish I had a tail. <laughs> okay. Well, I definitely want to equip that pocket watch because the duck call is just the worst version of it. Oh, Vivian says, me too sometimes. Jessica looks pretty busy, but then she always does. That letter from Uncle Murray was a real surprise. I didn't read it. What did it actually say? Basically, he just asked if I could come visit him because he needed help with something big, and he knew he had I had an adventuresome spirit. <laughs> adventuresome spirit? Yeah, that's Murray, all right. I haven't seen him in ages. I mean, I only ever saw him at Crimbo, and sometimes he came with us when we went camping in the summer, but after I moved out to go to college, we kind of lost touch, except for birthday cards. But you dropped everything to come to see him? To see Crazy Uncle Murray again? Of course. Does he still do that trick where he pulls five meat out of your ear? What? Ew. Yeah, it was super gross. I loved it when I was ten. Well, I'll bet he'll do it if you ask him. If you can find him. Yeah, here's hoping. How is this helping find Murray? Not to dispute the importance of collecting these weird artifacts or anything, but I'm worried about Uncle Murray. How is this helping find him? Oh, I guess I didn't really explain that. See, the Detectatron 1000 is new. We only really got it running after Murray disappeared. He always searched out artifacts in a more hands-on way. Research, networking, following rumors, that kind of thing. That last artifact he went after it could be basically anywhere. But the Detectatron only detects the nearest artifact. I see. So you figure if we pick them up in order, eventually we'll get to the one he was looking for. Right. I wish to hell he'd left a note about where he was going, but I guess he either thought it was too dangerous and didn't want us following, or he just rushed off all excited like a kid in a toy store. That's Murray for you. Yeah, that tracks. Okay. What would my next thing be? Hey, good to see you up. We've had quite a morning already. See that bookshelf over there? Just bought it. It's a real rare find, Vivian. Came from a 17th century cargo ship, the Mustflower. Wow, that's quite a provenance for a bookshelf. Yeah, it was the ship's wheel. Captain bought the Mustflower out of dock, couldn't steer, drove into a starfish, whole thing sank instantly. Anyways, anything I can help you with? Nothing right now, Charles. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. So, Jessica said something about uncurse it and go to sleep. So I think that going to sleep is our is the only way to progress the story forward. Okay. Okay, I see. I see how it is. Um so I think that's actually a really good improvement over the first game because in the first game you could just stay awake forever and keep all of your effects forever. You know, and never like need to really use food or potions unless like they were super OP. So I think this is our incentive to go to sleep, progress the story forward and try and experiment with new things with food and potions and whatnot. I I died a lot when I played the first game, so that was never an issue, because dying enough will put you to sleep. But the Let's Play I just watched, that guy just stayed awake forever and kept all of his super awesome effects. So, I, I like that. That's good. I am going to explore a little bit. 
We found a new place with Gabby. An elderly man with thick eyeglasses shuffles off to you with a determined expression. Before you can react, she shoves some meat in your mouth and shouts in your ear. Operator, operator, get my worthless son on the line. Mister, I'm not a payphone. That's what the last payphone said, and I'm not buying it. Let me talk to my frischligator son. I... I'm sorry, sir, the line is busy. Please try again later. Ah, probably gabbing with one of his foozy girlfriends. He shuffles away angry, angrily, and I gain meat. Nice. How much XP do I have? Not enough to buy anything. Okay. Do companions have something um, unique to say in every place? So, you're a flapper, right? Haha, <laughs> yes. Gabby flaps all of the time. Gabby's parent flaps too. And Grand Gabby. But it's only been the style for seven or eight. You, Oh, right. Goblins, um... Well, you don't live very long, huh? Depends on how you look for it. Parent Gabby popped a year and a half ago, at, but this Gabby basically is that Gabby and previous ones too. Haha, <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry too hard for it to get it. Us goblins think human baby making is super crazy. Okay. Someone has carved some strange symbols into this plinth. And that's just a normal plinth. Let's go in. There's a uh, Bible in that pew. Let's go look at it. There's a hymnal in the back of this pew. You got an item. Unpleasant hymnal. There's something unsettling about this book of hymns. Maybe it's the fact that every instance of the word God has been replaced with some kind of weird shifting ink lot thing. Crack it open to deal your mysticality and spooky damage once per fight. Okay, that might be useful if we ever find an enemy that's um, uh, vulnerable to spooky magic. The door down to the catacombs is locked, presumably so the cat doesn't get out. Okay. <laughs> Please don't disturb the altar. Okay. This is the cathedral's font, or more properly, typeface. You fish something up. You got a handful of holy water. If only you had also been blessed with something to carry it in. Deal a lot of damage to especially evil enemies. Probably shouldn't tempt fate anymore today. It's a vicar who seems agitated about something. Hello there. Oh no, oh no, what am I going to do? I was going to ask if everything's okay, but plainly not. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Uh, services are cancelled for the moment. What's the matter? One of the urns has been stolen from our catacombs. Stolen. This tiny cathedral has a catacombs? Well, it sounds nicer than basement. Are they particularly important ashes? Oh my goodness. We wouldn't keep the relics of a saint in a little cathedral like this. Our urns are just the ashes of former vicars and community leaders and so on. But they're all important in their own way. And the bishop is due to arrive for an inspection soon. Funny how bishops always seem to be just about to arrive for an inspection somewhere. What? I'll look into it for you. Oh, thank you so much. Here, I'll unlock the door so you can have a look. Mind your step on the way down, please. Those stairs are old and steep. Okay. The vicar has unlocked this door for you. Let's go down. It's a big crate full of identical empty burial urns. Must be spares. A fancy pedestal with an old urn on it. A fancy pedestal with nothing on it. There's a patch of tomb moss growing on a wall here. I need matches. It's the guest book. The last three visitors were Donk Hufferby, visiting from Saskatoon. Well, that seems like a dead end. And they sure have some weird names up in Canada. Charles Wallace, 111 Plunkett Street. Huh, that's the address of the antique store. You'll have to ask Charles about that next time you see him. And Captain Augustus Dirch, 23 Kerwin Ave. This one might be worth following up on. Captain Dirch's house. You sign your name and address after all the others. A very old manhole cover. It's you. Have you found her? Okay. 
Please hurry, the bishop will be here any minute. All right, don't get your rosary in a knot. All right. Let's go to Dirch's house. In an alley just off the street you're following, you see a bunch of worms burrowing around in a pile of garbage. Instead of being repulsed by this like a normal person would be, you are excited because you recognize the worms as Analita Gruticus, the western jungle filth worm. You think back on your lab training. You're pretty sure you remember how to get them to extrude some nasty and valuable goo. Milk those worms. Sweet, sweet nectar. Fustulant Grulch. This is definitely the most fustulant of the Grulches you're carrying around. Let's move on. Okay. This rock is steaming. Why do all the rocks in his yard have creepy glyphs painted on them? Weird. Probably shouldn't just barge in. Okay. <laughs> what was it? Uh... I'm from the Municipal Census Bureau. There's nobody here but me and these four urns. Urns? Five. Five urns. Go away. I'm selling these five leather jackets. Don't want any. Buzz off. I'm the milkman, or milkwoman. Got your milk. I ain't drink that fat water. Get lost. Congratulations, you've won a sweepstakes. Fat chance, never won nothing. Didn't... Hello? Didn't enter no sweepstakes, no how. Scram. Why is he snoring? I didn't want to snore. Amble away? Sure. Okay. I should go talk to... Charles. A young man wearing a flower-dusted apron swaggers up to you with a loaf of French bread on his shoulder and an arrogant sneer on his face. Hey, lady, this is Doughboy territory. If you want to walk down this street, you gotta pay the toll. What's the toll? Five meat. I should probably get into a fight. Ron the Loafer. Tutius the Dough Baby. Intends to heal Ron the Loafer for three. Okay. I'll just throw it. Throw the rock. And... Throw one of these, because I want to not have these dangerous things anymore. Oh, it actually hurt him. Okay. Surprising. Wow, looks like that guy is toast. Freshly baked roll. Say what you will about the effect the Doughboys have on the safety and prosperity of Ocean City, but you have to admit that they're pretty good at making bread. And a chef's hat. The iconic puffy white hat of the chef. Nobody knows why it's like this. I gain 5 XP and 15 meat. Okay. So that gives me plus 5 XP, but... I have a magic weapon right now. So... Well, I'm definitely going to put it on later and go back to that guy in the boardwalk. Charles seems preoccupied. He keeps checking his pockets in the drawers of his desk. Lose something? Yeah, I seem to have misplaced the chuck, chuck key to my drill. What's a chuck key, Charles? It's a little twisty thing for tightening the chuck on a drill. Any idea where you lost it? It can't have gotten too far. The cord in this thing is stuck in the outlet, and it's not long enough for me to drill anything that isn't in this neighborhood. I could help you look for it. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Like I said, it's gotta be nearby. Just wander around. I'm sure it'll turn up. There's a button in your lap map enabled wander that will allow you to have a random encounter without going anywhere. You can also wander while looking at the map by pressing space. Try that now. On your way to where you're going, you happen to notice a guy across the street. In particular, you notice that he's sitting on top of a mailbox. He notices you too and extends his hand towards you for a handshake. You call it across the traffic. Uh, hi! You realize that I'm about 30 feet away, right? Yeah, but I can't leave the mailbox. Sometimes I regret my curious nature, but I guess I'll ask anyway. Why can't you leave the mailbox? Come over and I'll tell you! 
Okay. Marvin. There's a mailbox here with a guy sitting on top of it. The guy reaches down from his perch to shake your hand. Hi, I'm Marvin. Hi, Marvin. I'm Vivian. What are you doing up there? A stunt! A stunt? It doesn't seem particularly stunty. You're just sitting there. Yeah, but I've been sitting here for... 7 months, 15 days, 9 hours, and 41 minutes. Why? Why? It's a stunt! Okay, but are you protesting something or trying to attract attention to some kind of cause? Nope. Do you have money writing on this for a bet or a contest? Nope. I feel like you don't really get the concept of a stunt. I guess not. Say, would you mind helping me out with something? Sure, what's up? I've mainly been eating snackle cakes while I've been up here and I'm out. Can you go grab some more for me? Snackle cakes? Are you serious? I admit they are an acquired taste. And I guess nobody other than you wanted to acquire the taste of powdered milk mixed with sawdust with the nail still in it. Because snackle mills went out of business a year ago. Yeah, but the shelf life on those things is incredible. It's what makes them so good for stunt rations. I got my supply from Hiram's Grocery down the street. Could you go pick me up some more? Yeah, okay, I'll be right back. Can I go in these houses? It's a random stranger's door. Okay. <sighs> Who's there? Vivian. Vivian who? Saunders. Sorry, I don't know anyone named Vivian Saunders. Okay. Well, I didn't ask Charles about... Oh, you spy a nest of pomade wasps underneath the awning of an abandoned storefront. Vespula cap capilla fluidus, you exclaimed to nobody in particular. You remember learning about these things in college and how their nests are a good source of hair gel if you ever find yourself lost in the woods without enough hair gel to last until you're rescued. You carefully bring a quantity of gel out of the nest without disturbing the wasps. Stylish gel. Wow, just look at this. You'll never be as cool as this slime. To where you were going. Okay. I need to ask Charles about the, the church. I saw your name in the visitor's book at St. Polycarp's. Oh, sure. I do a little whittling to pass the time now and again, and sometimes I go to St. Polycarp's to look at their gargoyles. Here, have one. He opens his desk drawer and tosses you a little wooden gargoyle on a leather cord. Gargoyle charm. A little wooden gargoyle on a leather strap whittled by Charles Wallace. The base has the motto, Keep on Trucking, carved into it. Oh, neat. Thanks. Let me ask you something. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna equip this for now and try and play chess again. Stench armor. Okay. Okay. I thought it was spooky armor. Okay. Okay. So what am I supposed to do with that? You find your path unexpectedly blocked by a huge pile of junk. A broken down car, a busted lamppost, a couch with the springs poking out of it, and a wide variety of other assorted trash. Geez, what happened here? Oh, Gabby has a memory of it. There was an accident a couple of weeks ago. That car had a tire break and smashed on the lamppost. That explains the car and the lamppost, but why are they still here? And what's with all, the, what's with all this other junk? City trash takeawayers are all contractors now, and who wanted to pay for it? Nobody. So the car went here, and people put junk there because that's the place where junk is. Huh, well, I guess we go around it. No, no, not in the street. That's dangerous. Look at that lamppost for what a car can do. Well, sure, but the traffic isn't bad right now, and here, it's not any problem. Gabby starts picking up junk and stacking it out of the way, clearing a path through the middle of the pile. Thanks, Gabby, but that's not really... Heave-ha! With a mighty shove, Gabby knocks the wrecked car over on its side and rustles it into a parking spot. Wow. Haha, <laughs> Gabby sure showed that car where a car goes. Woo! 
Gabby's muscle increases by one. Yeah, if this antiques thing doesn't work out, you can get a job threatening to park people's cars for them. This rock has a date painted on it, 11-10-82. Oh, you know what? I should... As you're walking through Ocean City, you see a couple of stranded motorists trying to change a tar tire. Their efforts are too bad to squat, though, because they don't have a jack. I can't do anything there. I can probably look at that date. At the... Here. November 10th, 1882. The cover story for that date is the sinking of the Poor Quad, a whaling vessel that operated off the coast of Ocean City. The story says that the wreck had only one survivor, Captain Augustus Dirch. Despite his best efforts to go down with the ship, he was rescued and transported to shore by a friendly otter. You're really starting to enjoy doing this kind of research. You've got news for old news and you're always sniffing. You gain extra XP for learning new things from the newspaper archive. A simultaneously tragic and adorable. Okay. Okay. Still not enough XP to, XP to buy anything. I should ask Mr. Dirch about that. As you're walking down one of Ocean City's residential streets on the way to where you're going, you hear eerie music coming from upstairs window of a nearby house. I'm gonna continue where I was going. I want to ask you about the poor quad. I... Alright, you better come in. 